Praise the Lord, everybody. Glad to be with you. In looking at that opening scripture, we see in Genesis chapter 26 and verse 13, it says, And the man waxed great. That man that is talking about is Isaac. In the preceding verse, in 26 and 12, it says, And the Lord blessed him. And he was able to that point grow. Can we say he created momentum? Uh, the Bible even says in, in 26 and 14, it says, And the Philistines, uh, well, they were jealous of him, of his possessions. Amen. And so I want to talk a little bit tonight about creating momentum, creating momentum within our lives, creating momentum within our church, creating momentum for our families. We have to constantly be moving forward. If we're ever stagnant, if we're ever digressing backwards, then that's where the devil seems to have his best foothold. That's where our flesh seems to work against us the most when we stop or when we digress. And so we always have to constantly be moving forward as much as possible. The Lord beckons us to constantly be growing spiritually. He constantly is pulling us and, and, and trying to work with us enough that we can grow in our relationship with Him. If not, we're digressing. If you think of it much like a train, a train has to build momentum before it gets up to a certain point of speed. But once it gets up to a certain point of speed, it gets to a, a point where absolutely nothing that gets in its way will stop it. We look at our spiritual walk with God the very same way. We want to get to a point where absolutely nothing that the devil throws at us will be able to knock us off course. And so we do that by creating momentum. The first thing is we've got to believe. We've got to believe like we never have before. And if you really have faith in God, then have faith in God enough to trust in him to move on your situation. If you really believe, you're going to be receiving. Amen. And so uh, I want to lay everything in the hands of God. I want to lay everything. Hey, listen to me. If you're worrying about something, that is holding you down and that is holding you back. That worry is robbing you of a blessing that you could be having. So do you believe in God enough to deliver you out of that situation? Do you believe in God enough to help you move forward? Do you believe in the church enough to help you get past that situation? Hey, if you were all on your own, hey, I would have no doubt. You should be in the mully grubs. You should be depressed. But if you've got a church, if you've got ministry, if you've got people working with you and behind you, there is absolutely no reason why you can't put your full trust in God. Amen. The next thing I wanted to speak to you about is boldness. We've got to be bold in the eyes of God. Think of it this way. Uh, when Paul was knocked off of his high horse on the way to Damascus, he could have gotten up, even when he had heard directly from God, he could have gotten up and still been angry with Christians to the point that he was willing to kill them, even though he already had killed several Christians up to that point. And so, but what we see there is, he realizes that he had heard from God and he needed to change. That took some courage to say everything that I had been doing in my past was sincere, but sincerely wrong. And so it's going to take some boldness for people to say, hey, I may have been sincere in the past, but I've got to move forward with boldness because if God is expecting me to become a new creature in Christ, I can't be the same way I've always been. I can't talk the same way I've always talked. I can't walk in the same areas that I've always walked. I have to be different. And that's going to take courage. That's going to take boldness for you to be able to do that. Now, of course, we expect that if you've been living for God any amount of time, that you should be bold enough to be able to testify. You should be bold enough to be able to witness. You should be bold enough to be able to share a word of encouragement with somebody that needs it. Praise God. And so when you're looking at building momentum, we're talking about boldness. The last thing I want to speak to you about is building. Now, I'm not talking about buildings. <laughs> I'm not talking about a structure per se, but I am talking about the act of building. And what that is, is building my walk with God. How do I do that? I've got to dive into the Word of God. I've got to dive into uh, church attendance on a regular, consistent basis as much as I can get there. Think of it this way. If you've went two or three weeks without going to church, do you realize how much spiritual 
uh, maturity you have lost within that couple weeks. If you've went a week without going to church, do you realize how much spiritual maturity you've lost within that one week? Because uh, if you haven't prayed, if you haven't talked to God, it's that much more that the devil, the flesh, and this world has gained a foothold on you just with one week. And so uh, I have to be building my walk with God all the time, all the time. And another thing that I want to be building is I want to be building people. I want to be building relationships with good, godly people. If God has helped me with something within my life, then I need to in turn turn around and be able to build someone else in the same way. Amen. And when we do those three things, when we believe in God like we've never believed, when we have a boldness from God and for God like we've never had before, and when we constantly look towards building like we've never built before, our walk with God, pouring ourselves into somebody else, we have no choice but to continually move forward. We have no choice but to continually create momentum within our lives. Amen.